Hi, uh, today I'm going to teach you how to use uh, set up your own VPN server using OpenVPN and if you're living in countries like China I will teach you how to bypass DPI as well okay first step is to get a VPS server I recommend Vulture and DigitalOcean after you got your VPS server you need to SSH into it so let's do that oh by the way if you're using passwords like me you then you're bound to get attacks a lot every day um, but so I recommend you use SSH keys if you don't know how to set them up I will provide a tutorial in description okay now we successfully SSH into our server let's um, we now have to install OpenVPN. So we have two choices based on where our clients live. If they live in countries like China or uh, countries that use DPI, then they're f So we have to figure something out. Um, China used DPI uh, to inspect our packets and f figure out the flow of our packet and they will figure out that we're using VPN so they will drop the packet and our clients cannot connect to our server so we need to figure something out so we have two options you can use this script which is popular and it's been around for many years and it supports many operating systems and it's really easy to use um, but the only downside is that it doesn't mm, bypass DPIs. Mm, but so I decided to write my own script that does it. Um, it bypass DPIs. Uh, here's the script. So mm, oh, the only downside is that I, it only supports Ubuntu, but I will try to add other operating systems to it. So. Uh, in order to install my uh, mm, script you have to copy this code here and paste it in, in your VPS okay it will ask us if you want to use HTTP proxy um, as it says here if your clients are living in countries with censorship uh, say yes uh, but if they live in normal countries then say no I'm going to press enter if you press enter it will use this default value okay so we said yes we want HTTP proxy now it will ask us do you want to set your HTTP proxy on this server uh, we can say yes if you don't have any other HTTP server or we haven't set up HTTP proxy on our on this server but if you have HTTP proxy then go for two option two but we don't have any so I'm going to say yes okay now um, it will ask us for a public IP to configure our uh, HTTP proxy it will by default um, figure out your public IP so I'm not going to change it because it's correct now it will ask us which proxy and uh, which port should our HTTP proxy listen to um, I'm not going to change it either since we're using HTTP proxy to bypass DPI OpenVPN has no choice but to use uh, TCP protocol that's the only downside but it's not a big deal because I will teach you how to improve your TCP connection later on in this video now it will, now it will ask us which port should OpenVPN listen to I highly recommend that you don't use this port because it's no, uh, everyone knows the port so China uh, will block this uh, block packets that are destined to this port so I'm going to use another port this is HTTPS port uh, it's if you use this port they will you have higher chance to not get caught using VPN okay uh, it will ask for DNS we will go with option 2 now it will ask us for our first client name and I will say 
YouTube, for example. Now we'll wait till it's over. The installation is over. Okay, now, now we finished installing OpenVPN and installing HTTP proxy, but now we need to check that um, if our OpenVPN is running. So we're going to say sudo service openvpn. It's inactive. That's bad. We need to start it. So start. Now let's check the status again. Now it's active. That's good. So now we need to enable the firewall. Uh, to open the ports that we specified for our HTTP proxy and our OpenVPN. So let's do that. First, we need to say sudo ufw allow SSH. We need to open SSH ports. I did it. I did it before, so it says skipping. We need to allow um, the ports that we used for our HTTP proxy so I'm going to enable that if you use another number um, for your HTTP proxy port then change this number now we need to specify our OpenVPN port as uh, and if you use another port then change this number okay now we need to enable the firewall because normally it's disabled by default uh, say yes uh, okay uh, now let's check our client config uh, this is what I created so let's we need to find a way to transfer this uh, config file from our server machine to our client machine so we're going to use SCP. First we need to log out. Then we need to SCP YouTube OVPN. Okay. Okay, now we successfully transferred our uh, client config from our server to our to our client which is us so for me it transfers the file to this location um, you can search if you can't find yours but let's right click on this open with open VPN connect okay connect after import and add let's wait and see if it connects okay good now let's check our IP address see if it matches okay now uh, I'm going to teach you how to improve your servers TCP connection mm. let's SSH back into our server I'm gonna say sudo nano etc sys ctl conf okay go down okay um, you need to add these three lines here I will provide them in the description okay now paste them here uh, control s to save and control x to exit now we need to say sudo sys ctl dash p Okay, we can see them here, those three lines here, so we're good. Uh, now we improved our TCP connection. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to make your server secure from brute force attacks using fail to ban. I will and I will teach you how to configure it. So first, we need to install fail to ban sudo apt install fail to ban. Okay, now we need to cd into it into the fail to ban directory. Now we need to 
copy the initial configuration of fail to ban uh, it's I think it's called jail.conf let's copy it into jail local local oh shit I forgot something I forgot to CP pseudo CP okay let's see yes we have it here now let's configure our fail to ban jail local okay uh, we're gonna go down till we see ban time yeah it's here uh, let's let's bump up our ban time to seven days so they won't attack us again mm. okay max retry is a number of times that a attacker can fail to SSH into our server in a 10 minutes time period so um, we need to have low numbers for find time and max retry but a high number for uh, band time so I'm not gonna change these two numbers but uh, let's go down till we see SSHD uh, yeah it's here now come here and say enable true control s to save control x to exit now let's see if our fail to ban is running sudo service fail to ban status it's active to get restart to apply our changes to jlocal okay so we need to restart it now let's check its status again okay it's active and it's running so it's good uh, now our server is secure let's see how many attacks we had status sshd okay 42 people or attackers have attacked us and they have been banned that's why I'm saying you need to change from password to SSH keys because lots of script kiddies gonna attack you every day uh, so you have to have a good password but if you have password people are gonna attack you more but if you have uh, SSH keys then uh, less people are gonna attack you and uh, that's it for now thank you for uh, sticking with me I hope you learned something today if you like this video then like the video if you hate the video then smash this like and subscribe if you want more um, thank you